Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Big Porky here. The voice of hardcore boxing. Now, it's been an exciting weekend uh, for boxing. Uh, I'm, I'm messing about with all sorts of different ideas in my bedroom here. Uh, I've got light in it, bedroom. And it's quite bright actually that but I don't know what I'm doing obviously I'm not a uh, tech minded I'm not lighting minded camera minded uh, I haven't got a clue I've done many videos with volume off I've, I'm on my second microphone I've different lenses I've look I'm having a go on uh, but I want to shout out to sporting icons for giving me a mention on your channel thank you very much I must be worried <laughs> But it's all good stuff, innit? It's, uh, it's YouTube, innit? And we've got a guest, Terry Chapman's armour. Hello there, Terry. How are you doing? Hey. You alright? Hey. Yeah, all the hardcore boxing fans, how are you doing? <laughs> uh, How's life in uh, London? Yeah. How are you doing, alright? I'm alright, pal. You alright? <laughs> Are you, uh, how's London today? I've heard there's been an accident on uh, Tower Bridge. I mean, it's miles from me, so I have no idea. Oh, right, oh. I can't see it from my bedroom window. Oh, it's south, isn't it? Isn't it near you? No? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not south anymore, mate. I've moved to Gotham. Gotham? Yeah, <laughs> I'm, yeah I'm not even, I'm not, na I'm not north, south, west or east. I'm just underground. Alright. Uh, no. you been keeping alright? Yeah, I'm alright, lad. You coming to show next Friday? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's yeah. good then. That's good. Good man. Yeah. Rico coming with you? Hey, Rico's his own man. Not Rico. Who's on about Rico's his own man? <laughs> yeah. he, you know, he knows where I'll be on Friday. Yeah, oh, you're not travelling up together then? Uh, well, I, mean, I don't know what I'm doing in the week. I might, I might go up and see Liam Cameron the day before. I don't know. I might go up and see Smedley. Yeah, you like. You and Chris Smedley get on, don't you? Well, he's not one of the Chris Smedley's not one of them guys that uh, he's not in every interview like Dave Caldwell and Joe Gallagher and do you know what I mean? He's not one of them top sort of guys. He's more of a like a Mark Tibbs, McCracken, Tony Sims type, if you know what I mean. They stay in background, don't they? A bit like you. You're not like that, are you? <laughs> I don't, well, I do a bloody podcast. So I yeah, well, you know what I mean. You don't. Uh, you don't put yourself about like them people. I don't. I think if even if you were a pro trainer, not an amateur trainer, I still don't think that you'd push it like they do. Do you know what I mean? I mean, this these what I've seen the last couple of days from Joe Gallagher. He's everywhere, isn't he? But you know what, Russ? It's a tricky one, right? Yeah. When you're a trainer, yeah, everything you do is behind closed doors. Yeah. So how am I supposed to tell people I'm any good? Okay, you get to see my fighters. Yeah. When you get to see my methods, when you get to see what I'm like as a person, and that's what people are really looking for. Yeah, it says, yeah. So I'm not mad at the call of what they want to be if I'm being honest with you, because that's his advertising, that's his only shop window to draw fighters in. Yeah. Where I have an issue with trainers isn't the interviews actually more, it's the, it's the backstabbing, it's the talking shit about other trainers, other fighters, and so forth, you know, to try and get you to come over to them. Yeah, you, I mean, you are. I'm not going to mention any names because I've already had, I've been told off off Dennis this morning over a few things that I've said on channel. Uh, but we obviously know the the certain trainers who send to, tend to send text messages to other fighters who they've met through sparring and there's kind of like feeling them out. And obviously, I've only been around Dennis now for just about five years. I, I'm only starting to see them things now because I didn't really care about that side of it. All I were ever bothered about was statistics and, and listening to Dennis all the time and, and picking people's brains. But what I tend to see now, now it, 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 when you scrape it bare, I see that there's a bit of cunning to it. It's like being a drug dealer, I suppose, isn't it, really? There's cunning thing, you know, like a drug dealer. He'll, he'll give you drugs for free, and then you get in debt, and then you've got to work for him. It, it's it, along them lines, and I don't. A lot of things that I see, I don't like. 
So let me, I'll explain it like this. Yeah. And this is based on what I've seen. And I'll, 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 I can talk it through from the amateur and the pro side. So on the amateur side, I train lads at one stuff. And they win the tournaments. And as soon as they won, all these other trainers from all these other clubs would be coming going, do you know what? You could have done this better. You could have done that better. You know, if you, if you stay where you are now, you're not going to progress. And, you know, and you're thinking to yourself, you don't have a fucking clue, mate. You don't understand what it took to get that win. And, you know, if you were any good as a trainer, your kids would be in the finals, but they're not. A lot of people just want to, they, they want to jump in once the, mm. once the fight is proven. And it's the same with the pros. So I can get you, let's say I get you in for sparring, Corky. Mm. And then I like how you look. I'll go, all right, mate. Look, let's just do a couple of rounds on the pads. You know, a bit of bag work. I'll have a little conversation with you. Get some food at Adventures' old man's cafe. I mean, get a bit of chicken and chips there. Sit down, have a chat, and I'll talk to you. And I'll, I'll give you a sales pitch for how you could be better. Now, if you're a bit iffy about your own trainer, you know, that's when I'm going to strike, when you're most vulnerable. Bam, I'm going to get in there. And that's what happens a lot in boxing. Do not get it confused. That's why, you know, sometimes you hear a trainer go, I think this fighter will lose. Yeah. Don't be surprised if he hasn't tried to train him already. And now he's just being bitter, because that happens as well. Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, and, and what I see, I, I don't uh, like and... I, I just don't like and the, the funny thing is, and I don't like to bring this up all the time, but... I do know certain trainers who they don't uh, like to get other fighters' phone numbers and speak to them without going through the trainer first, because trainers can be a bit protective about the fighters, I've noticed, can't they? Oh, yeah, because that's how they eat, Russ. Yeah, I know, yeah. You know, you, you, don't, you don't want me phoning your missus doing you, because you know what this is. It's like, it's like me, for instance, when I were involved in motor trade, if I've got a kid who's spraying a car for me and he's working four or five jobs a week for me, I don't want somebody else uh, going and spending time with him, do I? Another, another recut body shop man, do you know what I mean, or another motor trader, because I'd think, yeah. well, if he takes him, I'm going to be knackered here, because he's got access yeah. to all main dealer paint and that kind of stuff, and it, it's, a, a, it's just like being in business, isn't it, really? Because remember, Russ, trainers don't have contracts. Yeah, that's yeah. it. And, and they should do. For three years when you sign that contract. They should do, though. Yes, well, the two things. One, trainers should be given guaranteed, I think, two-year contracts. Yeah. And I also think they should be guaranteed... Well, I think between the trainer and the promoter... Uh, no, trainer and the manager, sorry. They should... They should share out 30% of a fighter's purse. I don't care if it's 20, 10, 10, 20. However they want to cut it, but trainers deserve more than 10%. Managers deserve a lot less than 25%, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of things we, we train it we trainers at the moment that I see and I hear stuff and I think, oh my God, I didn't see that coming. And I, and I think it, it it's quite shocking, really. It's It, it really bothers me. It really it tends... I know it shouldn't do, yeah, but it does. Because you have to remember, boxing is essentially a sport run by very insecure men at all levels. Trainers are mostly very insecure people. Yeah, and well, they will be. a insecure job because their prize asset can just leave them, like, without any notice, anything, just go. So yeah. you imagine how paranoid you're going to be if you're already insecure and you're in an insecure business. Mm. Yeah, I wonder if Robert McCracken were in, is, is a bit insecure at the moment with <coughs> Joshua's fight coming up because he said he's not retiring if he loses. Now, if he gets beat, is he going to stay with Rob because he's got access to all the EIS, hasn't he? Yeah, but if he loses, then that EIS doesn't mean anything, does it? That's no. Often. No. So maybe, maybe Joshua needs to go back to Tony Sims. Yeah, maybe. Well, Tony Sims got the game plan right yesterday. Well, it's, it's, it's deeper than that because, like, when you go to Sims' place, you've got to get up off your ass, you've got to drive all the way down there, the gym's cold, and you're just around loads of really hungry kids with points to prove. Yeah. And, like, when that rubs off on you, you just become a different animal. Like, I think because Joshua's used to being this top dog at the EIS and he's been there for so long, sometimes mm. that kind of familiarity. 
can just give you that complacency. He's yeah, been there nine year now, hasn't he? Nine, eight, nine year, ten years. It ten year, I think he's been there now, hasn't he? No, McCracken's been there 10 years. The first day, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. The first camp that Carl Froch started at the EIS when McCracken took over was the Kessler fight, the Kessler first fight. And I think Joshua had just come on the scene then. That was about 2010. And I think that's how long he's known Carl. Maybe, so... When did he win the silver in Baku, Terry? Joshua. He won the silver, didn't he? The World Amateurs, didn't he? He got a silver. Was that... 2011. 2011, so... Well, he'd been going up there a year then, Joshua. Yeah, about that. The facilities up there are... The, 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 are train Olympic athletes, don't they? They're the best in the country. Yeah, but... Yeah. Right, so they've done all the stuff about making Joshua a muscle man. They've done all the stuff about making him the black Ivan Drago and all that sort of stuff. They've done all of that. And what they found is all of their theories worked. All of their their science worked. They just had a guy who can't get up off the canvas now and be up a five foot eleven heavyweight. And so how do you fix that problem? I don't think you can. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. I mean, where does he go if he loses? Um, Hearn will find a way to buy himself back up the rankings. But how can you still be ranked in the top five if you've had two defeats? And especially if they're two stoppage defeats, I'd be worried as hell, Porky, if I'm being honest, mate. Yeah, and, would it, and is he still pay-per-view if he loses? Yeah, nah, look, if Chisora's pay-per-view, Joshua's pay-per-view. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 you, you probably, yeah, you're right, yeah, you're, uh, you're usually right on most things, uh, well, let's, let's skip through a few things here, a few things that I've jotted down, and we'll, uh, Reggie, I want Reggie, man, Reggie, <laughs> Reggie's, uh, Yeah. You look concerned. You know, why are you talking, Rachel? Like, you told me not Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. He's downstairs. <laughs> he, he, he's ready, man. He, he, he knows what to do if the police show up. Man. No yeah. Comment, no comment, no comment. Yeah, he's, he's well schooled about things like that. Yeah. <laughs> he's obviously he's autistic, so he's got a bit of OCD. He does everything literally. When I tell him to do something, he does it to a T, which is good, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, probably, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. Hey, Frank, Frank will be listening to this, actually. We'll give him a shout-out on Twitter, at HitPro. Frank is... He's a good man. He's a good man, and he's... Uh, he does everything to a T. He were an engineer, Frank, actually. He's done a few jobs for me with cars and that, and he is very, very well-prepared person, and everything he does, he puts his heart into it, but, yeah, he's a good guy. Now I've jotted some things down, uh, let me just put my glasses on, my, no, my old ones. Right, the the MTK Golden Contract Show, what do you think to that? Uh, if I'm being honest mate, I saw bits of it and then mm -hmm. I tuned in for the O'Hara Davis fight. So yeah. I thought O'Hara was brutal, but the Kitty Ford was a bit of an unknown. You know, he had, he had a, a bit of a profile in the amateurs because he'd been in with kids like Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia. Yeah. He really like dominated them, but he had been, he had been in that sort of company. But he wasn't he wasn't at that level. And you know, O'Hara, bloody hell, like some of those right hands he was hitting them with cruel. He you can know? punch O'Hara Davis, I've heard a, a little rumour from somebody up at Glen Rose gym. I said, What do you think to O'Hara Davis, uh, Glyn? And he said he can punch with the best of them in the world and his weight division. I said, seriously. He says, "Yeah, he's a massive puncher." Now, I, I didn't know he was. I know he. I knew he knocked Conor Ben out, but I didn't realise he was as good a puncher as what Glyn was saying. Power in both hands, break your nose with a jab, knock you out with a right hand. He's, he's oh, O'Hara's problem is this: no one's ever taught him how to how to put it all together in one package and be consistent with it. Yeah. So it was good. 
to see that he had he, in his corner he had Tony Cisse again. So Tony, for any Londoners listening, like Tony Cisse is like the godfather of East London amateur boxing. Yeah. Anyone who's any good bit out of East London has probably trained with Tony at some point. Yeah. Like old school, tough, brute. If you can survive this training, you can survive anything. Well, the guy he's just beat, O'Hara Davis. There's a 71% KO ratio. It was 16 and 0 with 12 knockouts, and Oara's just took him out. Yeah, there you go. Padded records, man. At yeah. some point, you're going to get asked tough questions, and <laughs> you find out who you really are. And Oara, really, t when you look at his situation, he's only really lost against top guys, hasn't he? Catrell and Taylor. And I don't even think. I don't think he's had a fair crack in a fight for, uh, hopefully with like, if he stays with Tony Cisse and trains with him and Lionel, who's the head coach at Repton, if he stays with those guys and he trusts them and this is, I think you'll see a better O'Hara Davis. I think if he can stay where he is now, he should be able to rise up to that kind of European world level and then hopefully stay there. Yeah. I mean, who else was on there? McKenna looked all right. Um, you know, I, I think this Irish boxing bubble is beginning to get exposed a bit, isn't it? With Paddy Barnes, uh, you know, no disrespect about a lad like Conrad Cummings as well. This Irish boxing thing, you know, we, like, we always believe because they do so well in the amateurs that, yeah, yeah, they, they'll produce world champions left, right and centre, but they never do. They always flat it to the sea. And I don't know what it is about Irish boxing, but it doesn't seem to have that toughness that gets you to the top, top level. Yeah, what, what, what was the guy that uh, Liam Cameron were going to fight? Uh, Byron Mc, McGuigan uh, got in touch with me about the uh, Conrad. Oh, Conrad. Conrad, Conrad uh, we were going to put Liam in with Conrad because Liam had the Commonwealth and Barry McGuigan wanted to make the fight and uh, Dennis just kept saying uh, it's going to be another six months and then another... F and, and it obviously it didn't work out, did it, for Liam? With his belt oh, and all that yeah. situation. I, I would have taken that. That would have been an easy. And I think I think Conrad went and did he get beat? I think he got beat, or he had a draw, or something happened, or he got robbed. I think he might have got robbed on a show at Wembley. I, I can't remember, but it it, it would uh, he did win, but he got robbed, and it all yeah. fell through, which which is like a lot of things that happens in boxing. But I think that. He's, he's from that sort of era in Ireland where they aren't, they're not strong, as it? They're not strong. To say it's a, a fighting nation, when you speak of Irish people, that we, we always say fighting Irish, don't we? Because they all want to fight when they've had a drink. But I don't think that there's a lot of stars coming out of Ireland, is there really now? No, no, look. look Irish people are fighters when the other person can't fight. When the other person can fight, then... It you know, it all seems to fall away. And that's not to dig out a whole nation, it's just, in my time watching boxing, and having boxed against Irish amateurs, they they don't have, it's, it's just that top level, they never fill you with confidence. Mm. Yeah, you might be right, you might be right. So looking at, moving on from that then, we've got Oara Davis fought on there, Tyrone McKenna, uh, Martin McDonough fought, he won beat Josh Thorne, Elliot Whale made his debut. Uh, well, sorry, he didn't make his debut. Elliot's a good kid. Like, I'll be interested to see what he does. Yeah, he didn't fight, did he? Um, I don't... Got postponed, it says here. P, it's on, on, on here. Who, Elliot? Yeah, it just says a P, middle in yellow on box rec, so that's... Yeah, he won. He won. I spoke to him over the weekend. Oh, did he? Oh, why does it say a P, then? Why are you asking me? I spoke to him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's unlucky not to be part of GB, but he's in good hands. I think he's training off iBox with my mate Eddie Lamb as well. So mm. he's got a good setup behind him, MTK and backing him. He could be a surprise. It's very, around that welterweight, you know, mm. from 140 to 154, he could be a surprise. Mm. He's got his work cut out, that Lee Eaton, hasn't he? You know, MTK. Got his work cut out in because. You know, I, I heard he were up and down like a yo-yo. It's a bit like uh, Mo Pryor. Whenever you see Mo Pryor at your call, he always looks like he's going to have an heart attack, doesn't he? 
You know, he's always running about and dabbing his face with, uh, with his anky and... Uh, see, all right there, Mo. So you need to get a gastric like me. But, uh, but yeah, they've got a lot on the plate, MTK, at the moment. I saw your uh, friend Craig Richards and, uh, oh, what's the other kid called? Anthony Yard and my friend Dean uh, White. They were all there, weren't they? And yeah. Home. They're always at your call. Like Craig will go down to watch. Like even a guy who's like two and oh but if he knows him from from sparring or training, Craig will be there. Kiria Paul will be there. Umar Sadiq was there as well. Mm. You know, a lot of people were there because all those lads came up in the same generation. Right? Yeah. That's yeah. How we all know each other. That's why we're all mates. So they're, they're that kind of 2010 to 2015 generation. So they all know each other. Yeah. And the message we try and share is. We'll move further if we stick together. So we all try and move as a group, you know, and try and support each other, give each other. Advice. Well, I think that's good actually, because Anthony Yard obviously is is uh, is a is a millionaire obviously now. Anthony Yard and he look for him to take time out to go support all the people he's come up with. I think I, I, I've got a lot of respect for him, Anthony Yard. Now I thought he had an easy run to that fight, to that to that big check that he got. He didn't really fight anybody that he should have done. But he didn't fight any top guys, did he, to get the Kovalev fight. But he nearly pulled it off. Yeah, yeah. And obviously he, he's the poster boy for Adidas and his, uh, Adidas. He's got another few few other things going on. I think that's good that he's still grounded. And he seems like he's a, a, a gym rat as well. But Craig Those Richards, eh? Hey? Those are his mates. Yeah, they're his mates. Yeah, those are the sort of people, if you're ever in East London and Stratford or something, you'll see those guys sat together having food, just catching up. Yeah, Stratford, is that London, yeah? East London, yeah. East London, yeah. Well, Frank Bullioni beat Craig Richards on points, right? Do you think that Craig Richards were just feeling his sent out as a light anyway? Because wasn't he a super middle to start? Frank got in at 190, didn't he, I heard? Well, he, he can get that big. I don't think he, he fought that big. Because that would that, be a long way for him to put on. Yeah, but he walks about at 190, doesn't he, Frank Bullioni? If, if you remember, Craig had less than a week's notice. Something ridiculous like that. And basically they put a gun to Craig's head and said, mate, you've got to take this fight. Oh, did Frank? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was meant to be Callum Johnson originally, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, then, and, then, and then Callum obviously had personal stuff he had to deal with, and they were left at a bit of a loose end, so they're like, who can we get in? And they just said, right, give it to Craig. Mm. And, like, I've known Craig for, for years now, at least seven years, and I've always mm. said to Craig, you're a light heavyweight. He always wanted to be super mid, even middleweight, he was talking about. And I think, had he fought Bullioni after a couple of fights at light heavy, he'd have beaten him that night. Mm. Yeah, he thought it was on the uh, on the Joshua undercard, wasn't it? Tackham. Yeah. So he'd have got paid for that, Craig Richards, then, wasn't he? He'd have got paid well. Uh, listen, he drives, a, he drives a BMW M5. He's doing okay for himself. Well, that's good then. Now, I like it. I like Craig Richards, and I like Anthony Yard. I've never really dug them out because they've never really done anything to cheese me off but I've watched a few of their interviews and I'm trying to get into their mindset because it's not always about matchroom fighters I'm, I'm starting to spread the net a bit th thinner or thicker whatever it is bigger and uh, I, I'm trying to look at these lads here that th from obviously the London kids aren't they and I think they've got good attitudes I know they've both got a defeat on the records but I don't think that'll bother them I think they've got the, the, a good mindset, and I, and I think it, and I don't think either of them punch drunk. I don't think they've got miles on clock to say they're coming up to, you know, the late twenties. Uh, I just like the styles. I like Craig Richards' style. I like Yard. I think he's very exciting, very exciting Yard. I think he, he reminds me of David A when he burst on scene, 
and he took that Carl Thompson fight, he ran out of gas. I think his Carl Thompson moment were against Kovalev, Yardes. And he'll learn from it, won't he? But I think he's a world champion in making. I think Craig Richards can, can fight for a world chat title. But I think Yard wins one. What do you think to that? Well, look at Craig's record, right? Craig, Craig's record up to now is solid. It's the kind of record where you say, mate, you have not been put in easy, have you? Craig hasn't been fed anyone. Yeah. What I like that is that's the kind of preparation you need before you get to the top level. He's the best prepared. And, and I know people talk about Joshua Barsley being a world champion in the making, but I'm like, Josh hasn't had the trials and tribulations that Craig has. I think mm. Josh has got them to come, but Craig has had his already. If you think about the guys he's been in with, Andre Sterling, as tough as they come. Jake Ball, XGB, was meant to box Craig's head off, got stopped. Yeah. You've been in with Ricky Summers, you've been in with Frank Bullione. You You've been in tough. And, and it's only now Craig started to get his respect, but look how long he's been on matchroom. And Herland's basically been looking for reasons to sack him off. Yeah, her, don't do tickets, does he? Yeah, he does. Craig's always done his tickets. Is it always the, always the one who don't do tickets out out them too? Is it Yard? Uh, nah, they all do tickets. Awara, Awara's the one who's not the ticket seller out them guys, isn't he? Because he's from that era, isn't he? Yeah. Nope, Awara does tickets. Awara. Well, he didn't do when he fought uh, at Matchroom because then he were always complaining about his tickets, the ticket sales. which was really smart. Him and Anthony Yard, they powered themselves up with the guys from The Only Way is Essex. Mm. So whenever O'Hara fought, you had those guys fighting. And yeah. then all, once that started to build, then people were just getting involved in it and it was bringing attention. O'Hara moves tickets and it's why Matchroom kept him for so long, even when he was, you know... Oh, he didn't do a ticket. I could have sworn O'Hara Davis did an interview and he said he only did so uh, X amount of tickets or summer and... Uh, I think he said in an interview, and, and you can quote me on this. If in fact, if hardcore's try and find it, Awara were going on about tickets on IFL, and he said he only did uh, six or seven. It might have even been on his channel. I'm sure. I'm sure he said he don't do. He didn't do a ticket. He might do tickets now, but he didn't. Or he was struggling, and he, he, he was saying he had uh, to. G uh, go on, jump the tube to get to the gym and things like that, and he weren't selling tickets. And no, that's before. No, no, that's Is that all before he went? All oh, right. Because yeah. who did he start out with then? Russ, Russ, Russ. Look, you're close to Dennis, right? Yeah. How many people do you know can do 250, 300 tickets? Uh, Josh Whale. You're, yeah, beyond that, you're struggling, right? Tommy Frank, maybe 180. Yeah, 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 it's so, Toby Frank 180, maybe 200 at a push. So someone like Craig Richards could do 150 to 200 consistently. That's good, that. Yeah. Uh, Yard, same thing. When O'Hara got past that debut, he, he started packing. When he lived up with the Sims guys, that's when he started to hit those sort of 200 ticket numbers. So that, that, those guys were the ticket sellers, and that's why they were always on shows, and that's why people gave them attention. 200 tickets, right, at 40 quid is 8 grand, right? That pays for your opponent, and it pays for you, you as well, and it puts a bit of money back in the pot to make up for the kids that don't sell tickets. That's how we work it at, at, at Dennis's. It, it, you've, got to have to, you've got to be ticket sellers. It's hard to box if you don't sell tickets. Yeah, oh yeah, because nobody's yeah. interested in you. If you do sell tickets and you can't fight, you 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 you're protected. So uh, let me give you an example. Look, I've got a friend, and he's he, Russ, he's going to be fighting, and he's paying out of his own pocket to fight. Not because he can't sell tickets, but simply because it's too short notice. But he needs to get on the show, so he's like, "Look, I'll cover your costs. I'll cover the opponent's costs. I just want to fight." And this is a side that people don't get to see. So sometimes when, when you laugh at someone's box rank, remember, he might have had to put his own money up to build that record. Yeah. Yeah. I see what you mean. It's important though, isn't it? But it's such a brutal sport. Oh, it's so God, it's... When you scratch the surface, it's... Uh, I mean, I, I'll never forget, right, when I first started, I always revert it back to 